The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. The following program is closed captioned for the thinking impaired. By tomorrow, I will rule the world! <laughs> You think he's gone? He's not gone. That's the whole point. He's never gone. Is this some radical new therapy? You see? Oh, well, I mustn't have been paying attention when you were just talking to me. Do you think that you could repeat the question? She's leaving on me already. <laughs> That's what you wish after you made me come here. Huh? Almost ready. Okay. All right, I guess we'll start the show. We'll start the show. All right. Hi, how you guys doing? My name's Tom Duggan here at the Paying Attention Podcast. Hi, Top. Two Guys Smoke Shop at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. Got a great show for you today. We've got uh, Lawrence City Councilor Estella Reyes. Um, she's a candidate for state representative, and um, we're going to be covering all of the candidates. Any of the candidates that want to come on are going to be afforded the opportunity to come on, no charge. Uh, we're going to be scheduling some debates. I think I've got the debate for the state senate race is going to be the, l- the second to last week of August. And um, we've, we've also in negotiations with the Jeff Deal campaign for governor of Massachusetts to try and get him or his running mate, Leah Cole, on the show. Now, I'd love to have Leah Cole on the show, his lieutenant governor running mate, because she actually sat through one of my lectures. I did like a two-and-a-half-hour lecture in Boston on um, media bias, and she was there. She actually watched it. And so anybody who sits through any, any of my lectures is okay with me because that can't be an easy thing. Uh, I want to thank our sponsors, and we will do that um, in a couple of seconds. But first, uh, I think we've got uh, Don Smeriglia. We've been promising to do this for a couple of weeks. We and I do this a lot. I say I'm going to do something because I intend to do it, and then it ends up not happening. So this morning I said, you know what, get call, got to call Don, see if we can get him to Skype in. Uh, is he on the line? Do we have him here? Uh, we have... Yes. All right. Okay. Don, Don, tell us what's going on down at Borelli's Deli today. What what can people expect if they come in? It's Father's Day weekend. Thank you, Tom. This is Don Smeriglio from Borelli's Italian Deli in Methuen. We're here today at the deli, and we're showcasing our fresh homemade Italian sausage, sweet Italian tomato and cheese, garlic tomato and cheese, our very special Tom Duggan extra hot sausage made especially for Tom himself. We have everything sausage. We've got all kinds of marinated meats and chickens and uh, all kinds of salamis and cold cuts. Uh, over here, we have our, we have fresh frozen pastas that comes from Maria's Gourmet Pasta in Boston. Uh, they're excellent pastas. We have all kinds of sauces that goes with it. We have Alfredo sauce, we have the lobster sauce, we have bolognese sauce, we have the vodka sauce, piccata sauce. And then we move over here and we've got all kinds of prepared meals. A lot of comfort food, shepherd's pie, macaroni and cheese, uh, stuffed eggplant, uh, veal parmesan, American chop suey, lasagna, meatballs, chicken parmesan, uh, eggplant parmesan, homemade marinara sauce, and then we always have tons of soup. Homemade Love the soup. Wedding soup, chicken rice, chicken vegetable, minestrone, uh, clam chowder. I know we can't hear you, but I love, uh, the, I love the soup so more marinated meats, and uh, we have all kinds of, we have Italian steak, we have a steakhouse, we have Italian, we have bourbon, um, we've got lemon pepper chicken, we've got Italian style chicken, three days, three days in chili, um, and a few others, so, uh, and then we've got a, a full service deli, uh, that's, that's um, always stocked and ready for you to go in. Just don't forget people, it's Father's Day weekend, it's 
Big grilling weekend. Make Dad go on the grill and cook. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Don. All right, Don, Don Smiriglio at Borelli's Deli, one of my favorite places in the world. And by the way, they've got some amazing uh, butternut squash ravioli. If you like butternut squash ravioli, it's really good. They have spinach ravioli, too. Mm-hmm. And something else that I never liked macaroni salad. Oh, ever. Me. I go to you know, cookouts and stuff. It's always there. I never really liked it. I ordered chicken salad one day, and they gave me macaroni salad by accident. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize until I got home. And I said, well, it's here. Let me at least try it. It was amazing. I was it like, is. oh, my God. Something that I never would have tried because I didn't like it any other time I've ever had it, and it was really, really good. So thank you, Don, Don Smiriglio from Borelli's Deli, a fine, fine sponsor of the show. I also want to thank Matt and uh, Sam and Janet McLennan at McLennan Real Estate. I have a sore throat. I'm struggling through all this, so just uh, bear with me. Uh, AFC Urgent Care, Marston and Sign Construction, EIS Investigations, uh, Tomo and Shaken Seafood right down the street on 28. We were there last night. Uh, Lazy River Products in Drake It, and a free shout-out to Sullivan Insurance and Sebastian's House of Toys in Haverhill. Sitting to my left, I have uh, one of my favorite people in the world these days, and um, we, we, we didn't really start off okay when she first got into politics. We were kind of like on the opposite sides of stuff, but uh, over the years, we've kind of come together, and we've come to understand that, like, you know, if, if, if Lawrence does better, if we're both working together... Then, then we can help the community, and so we have been, and I appreciate that, Estella Reyes. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. I don't even remember about the past. I don't think we ever had anything that we had not been in the same page. Uh, I, was, is- I, I was just mean to you. <laughs> I was mean. I, I'm going to admit it. I was mean and I shouldn't have been. Well, but I was uh, bad, but I'm, I'm sorry. So you probably did to someone else, but not to me. So okay, all definitely. I have to say is good things about you. And okay. thank you for this great opportunity. Because this is not something that you're going to get every day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You are a member of the city council. You're running for state rep. Why don't you start by telling people how long you've been on the council and what some of your accomplishments are? Yes, Estella Reyes, uh, councillor for District B, and I had been serving the great community of Florence for 11 years. Wow. So, it's, yes, it's a long time. It's um, a lot to say. I know how long it takes just to get things done. And when you go to one year to another, it's not much that you can do for the people. Uh, remember about you or legacy, I can say. But yes, I'm very proud of to be serving uh, my community. And now to have this opportunity to be able to serve me doing the same way that I had been serving my community. One of the things that I love about Estella Rays is that when TMF was trying so hard to go back to the Buckley garage where they were before the previous mayor had thrown them out, I went to all the city councils. I talked to all of them. I didn't really get all that much of a warm and fuzzy feeling from too many of them. Uh, a lot of them didn't want to reverse something the previous mayor had done. A lot of, a lot of them didn't even want to talk, to, to, to talk about the subject. But when I reached out to Estella Reyes, she said, okay, let's sit down and have coffee and see how we can make this work. And she did. She's one of the reasons why this happened. And I always going to do, uh, if you have to do a descent, what I did last time. Unfortunately, you know, being served with eight other members, it, it doesn't matter if I want to go one side if not everybody is on board. But every single time that has come in front of us, you're always going to have me on that side because I know the great needs of those people have and we can be the resources that probably they might need or looking for it. So you decided to run for state rep. Why did you decide to run for state rep? I mean, you, 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 this is a gig. If you wanted to stay on the city council the rest of your life or run for mayor later, you could. I mean, you're very, very popular in your district. Why, why would you think about jumping to a state rep seat? I think it's time to move up, and the reason why is because um, I still have to do a lot for Lawrence and also for Methuen's. This past Tuesday, when we were um, serving as an ordinance committee, something comes in front of us. It was an item that we are changing a piece of the ordinance to the sewer and 
the new pipes for the new constructions. Many things is coming from the fund and grant that we have to advocate in uh, Beacon Hill. So I think my boys can be raised at that level. If I go and fight because I know all the needs, not only for Lawrence, but yes, also for Methuen, because I, I can give you a great example. Yesterday, I was driving into Methuen because I live in Lawrence, but I do my life in Methuen. I go to the supermarket, I go to the restaurants. So it's, it's basically, for me, it's the same community. It's something that is I have the passion to help. So I'm not looking for a job. I'm looking for, to continue helping at a different level. And let's say, you know, TMF, just to kind of give it an example since we start opening that up. We know the crisis. We know what we need to do, but also, we have to go beyond that. Is is a lot of follow up with that. Is a lot of programs that we need to oversee, and and I know how to chase grant. I know how to do it. So I have two park has been renovated in my district, and two school is going to be built. In in district B. In district B. So how do you translate that? I know that you've got a lot of support in Methuen, which really surprised me. Because both communities are very territorial. They only really like to elect people from their own community. And yet, I showed up at your fundraisers, fundraiser at Mama Juana's, which, by the way, I was pretty impressed with the food there. Didn't think I would be, but I was. Um, and I walked in, and the first person I saw, and I almost fell over when I saw him, was Methuen City Council Mike Samad. Because the, per, the person running against you was a Methuen City Councilor. So I would have thought the Methuen City Councilors would have lined up for one of their own, to have somebody from Methuen representing them in that race. And I walked in and I saw Mike Samad and a bunch of other people from Methuen, and I was, I was shocked. How, how, do you, how, do you, how do you get the people of Methuen to come on board and see that you're a better candidate than the guy that's from their own, their own city? Let me just start um, saying that what you don't change, you choose. So I had a good reputation, and, you know, Hamble, I can say this. It's no Stella Regis. This is not about me. Uh, but um, Simar has been involved in our community for such a long time. So it's not a secret that he can pass on, that he is not supporting Estella just because we are friends. It's because all the work that I have been done, that he also wants me to be able to do what I'm doing. So don't get surprised for more folks that is going to be on board and is going to come in support. Because we really need someone who has the experience and know what to do. But most important, one of the things that uh, that is missing in Methuen that is for my prospect, I don't think that can be the truth, but I'm, I'm digging it and try to get more information about it. We really need someone who can chase grant. Methuen's really need a lot more than what we are being presenting to them. I think, you know, um, water and sewer, just to kind of throw something out, mm -hmm. um, metal detected to our school, uh, mental health programs. So it's so many things that I can be on and on that I'm here to offer to work for uh, now my community, Methuen. So have you knocked doors in Methuen? Have you gone and, and talked to like regular people in Methuen other than like the politicians and stuff? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, yes. And what, and are you, what are you hearing at the doors? Because whenever I talk to candidates, they always tell me that they have their kind of platform that they want to talk about. Then they get to the doors and people want to talk about something totally different. So I am very grateful for the door that I has been um, hit by this time. And one of the things that kind of surprised me that is now the reputation that we've been hearing from others that Methuen only want to elect a Methuen people because uh, I had a good reception. So they opened the door, they expressed their concern. Um, but, you know, but one thing that I have to repeat is that they are tired to be uh, serving by the same group of people. Mm. So he want, they want to break that. They want to see the changes. They want someone who can bring better in um, news ideas. So uh, basically it is, is something that I am surprised 
because I know that the first thing when I decided to run for this open seat, um, one of the things they were telling me is like, oh, but you don't live in Methuen. Yeah, I don't live in Methuen, but I do my life in Methuen. So I know all the places mm-hmm. uh, in Methuen. As I, can, I can tell you about the Methuen also need uh, infrastructures. So I was driving into Methuen, which I'm going to reserve the street, doing the door knocking yesterday, and my car got in, into a hole. So eventually, it's, it's, it's so needs over there that we need to bring more money for bridges, roads, sidewalks. So it, by going back to the to the topic and the subject, um, yes, they being answered. They, they, you know, the answer has been very positive on my side. Um, and I think, you know, it sh- I mean, no, that it should, but I hope it stayed that way. What are some of the issues that when you're knocking on doors, people are... How, is, is it all like grant stuff, like they just need more state money, or are there other issues, uh, police, fire, are there other issues that they want you to tackle? Well, there's so many uh, issues that I didn't want, I didn't know that I was going to hear from the resident of Methuen, and uh, they being uh, very conservative. Um, I'm saying things like, um, yeah, we need more public safety, we need... Um, we need to the public. I mean, the safety to get involved in our school. Uh, we need to get uh, more programs for uh, mental health. So uh, that's basically what they've been saying. I hope when you're knocking doors and they talk about police and fire, that you remind them that the guy running against you cut police in Methuen. Well, right, the uh, City Council, he cut police on at least three huge occasions that I can remember. In fact, one of them was like seven million dollars out of the. Well, Tan, you know me long enough, and you know that I don't talk about any other candidates. I think it, they are being a citizen on Metu, and they should know what my city council has been done, because I'm telling you, all my constitution, and I'm not talking about only District B, they know what I have done and how I'm going to be voting when something comes on on top of the table. So uh, when they try to talk about him... Um, I just kind of, you know, stay neutral Mm -hmm. because it's something that they have to decide when September 6th come in the election. If they want to continue being living the same or they want to give someone opportunity to make the changes. You know, I have to say, I I think that's refreshing because most candidates, like we're dealing with this with the, the, uh, the governor's race in Massachusetts. You've got Jeff Deal versus Chris Doty and the Jeff Deal people hate Chris Doty. Like they've never even met the guy. But they trash him every chance that they get. And most candidates and most candidate supporters will trash the other person like they're a bad person, not just somebody that's running for the same spot. So I, I at least admire that because if I was running for your job, I'd be knocking on every door reminding them that this, the guy running against you, he might be a Methuen city council, but he lives in his mom's basement and he doesn't have a job. And for you to just kind of not go there and not, and, mm-hmm. and, and not engage in that, uh, I think that says an awful lot for you because that's an easy hit for you. Like that's an easy thing for you to say that's true that can get you get you people on your side over him. Yes, but I don't want to take my time to promote it someone. So I have to concentrate on just talking about me. Mm-hmm. I do real estate for for living, so I own my property. So you have a job. I do have a job. You just got a job. That, that's uh, one leg up on the guy running against her. Uh, I have a job, and I and I just say, you know, what I have done with my life. Mm-hmm. So if mm-hmm. that can be the reason that you want to give me that opportunity, I have my own houses. Um, and when I say houses, it's because I have more than one. And I have my job which is always has been the same one. So that can tell you a lot about someone who has been spent 20 plus year in one place. Right. So we're just getting promoters and, and promoter and promotions every time we have that opportunity. So again, I'm not going to be wasting my time to promoting someone that they should know because I'm sure they, they know. Yeah. But they also testing me when I go if I'm going to start talking about, about him. Right, about right. something. So if you talk, well, you can leave that to me. I'll be happy to talk about him as much as I possibly uh, well, can. I'm not a big fan yes, of your opponent. Yes, yes, but although uh, I would let him come do the show no, if he wanted uh, to, but he won't come. Uh, I'm going to stay in this race clean, simple and clean. So if he comes with something up, then eventually I have 
my my information under my arm that I can throw it at anyway. And I'm sure that you, when you try to put it together, you can make the balance mm. and you can make the answer. Mm. Yeah. Shay, you're a better person than I am because I'd be out there doing every, every door I'd knock. I go, the guy's got no job. <laughs> the guy, he, he's running for the job because he needs a job. That's why he's running for the job. But you, but you, I, I admire that you're not doing that because I, I, it's an easy hit for any politician to do. Good. Yeah, but this is not going to sound right. But shame on the people who are going to give it opportunity to someone mm-hmm. that you know that they are going to use this race just to make a transition. Mm-hmm. Because he's telling you very clear that he's not going to stay there. And probably in a year, I'm in two or three years. He'll run for something else. So he's else. running for something else. But what you can done in two years. Right. My friends, nothing is going to be done in a year or two. So I know how long it took for us just to get a new police station in Lawrence. So I know what I need to do, and I'm not going to go there to learn. I have, I have a great connection with the state legislators that I don't have to go and try to chase people. Mm-hmm. Because you see, you went to my... my uh, All the my, state reps, were they even, exactly. even Barry Feingold supported oh, you. Oh, no, he's one I of my biggest I saw, supporters. I saw Barry no, Feingold, no, no. I said, this is like Groundhog Day. This, I haven't seen this guy in five years, and I show up at a Stella Reyes event, and there he is. Don't get surprised. He is one of my biggest supporters. Good, good. He endorsed me. Have him give you his donor list. That's what you need. <laughs> <laughs> because I looked up on the OCPF website, the Office of Campaign and Political Finance, he's got over five hundred thousand dollars in his account. You should have him write you a check and give you his donor list. And if he does that, you win easy. Between that and Mike Samad, I don't think you have a chance of losing. I have to love this guy, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of Barry, but I'll tell you why. If it's going to help, it's going to help. In fact, oh, I'm, not yeah, a, he- I'm not a big fan of Mike Samad these days either. But you know what? People love him. And, and they love him for a reason. He's a good counselor. Oh. Whether I like him or not, he's a good counselor. So having him endorse you and then having him in your newspaper ad in the Valley Patriot, I think was huge. I think that's going to help you out a lot. Are there other Methuen people who are, who are helping you instead of the Methuen guy? Yes, I do have a lot of um, Methuen's folk that I want to reserve the name just okay. because, you know, I didn't ask permission just okay. to kind of say that in public. But I had a great connection in Methuen and people well known and, you know, well respected in Methuen. So I think, uh, you know, we are in a good position. I was talking about a tough, a tough topic um, because I did a show and I know you didn't see it. I'll send it to you. You should, you should be watching the show every week. Okay. And what I did was I called all the candidates, or I reached out to all the candidates, and I asked them with all the stuff going on with Roe v. Wade and abortion, where, do you, where would you stand? If Roe v. Wade gets overturned, where would you stand on, at the state level? It'll, it'll come back to the states. It'll be up to the states to decide uh, on abortion. But they're not going to be deciding should we have it or shouldn't we, because we know we, Massachusetts is going to have it. The question that's going to be asked after Roe v. Wade gets overturned, from what we're told, um, is what restrictions, if any, would you put on abortion? Would it be just okay up until birth? Would it be... And you were the only one of the 13 candidates, the only one of the 13 candidates who said, yes, I think it's a, it's a woman's choice. However, there needs to be common sense restrictions. We need to have reform on this. We can't allow kids to be getting abortions without their parents' consent. And, and partial birth abortion is kind of disgusting. I'm paraphrasing. And I was really, I was, A, I was surprised that you said it because that takes a, that's, that takes a lot of bravery to say that. When you're in a p- political party that pushes abortion on demand up until birth. So I'm, uh, thank you for the question. I'm not going to repeat myself. You just said it right, and nothing has been changed since the last time we spoke in, in saying my questionnaire to you. And, and again, we still need to do more research, more digging into this topic. And like I say, you know, and I'm going to repeat it, this is something that... Um, we gonna stay the same is a woman's choice, and 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 I don't think it, we live in just that way and wait what is gonna happen. But the good thing about that, when you say that I was the only one who said what it said, is mean that I'm not afraid to touch any topic. It doesn't matter how you know how hot is get in or which side people think I might go, because this is not it. And and I'm going to this part. I'm going to repeat. This is not about Estella Reyes. I have two children. I raise my children, and I respect everybody's right. Excellent! Isn't she adorable? Uh, if you were, if you weren't dating a cop, I would just I would I would marry you in two seconds. <laughs> Honest to God, 
She's just so amazing. So you're gonna if you run and you win, what is the? Oh, <laughs> See, I have, I have. Her, heart, her heartbeat on her watch just went up. No, this is is this is the oh, baby. Oh, the lights. Oh, yeah, God, yeah. God bless you. So it's, it's it's for you to know that I my I have my audience just watching in here this show. Good for you. <laughs> If you run and you if you, if you win and there's a pretty decent chance that you could win this race, although there was, there was a third, thank you, there was thank a, you. There was a third guy that's going to screw it up a little bit. But if you win, what are your priorities? Like, say you win in November, they swear you win like January third or fourth, whenever. What what are the first one or two things that you're going to do, um, hitting the ground running? Because you don't have to learn on the job like the other guy. You're going to know because you 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 you've worked with Frank Moran. You've worked with Barry Feingold. You've worked with all the state reps on a lot of different grant proposals. What, what do you hit the ground running on? Okay, uh, the first thing I'm going to say just to answer that question is uh, Stellar Rages do not have an agenda. It has priorities. And one of the biggest one is we don't want to wait until something like similar happen in Texas is coming and happen here. So we really need to pay attention what we are doing and how we are going to be invest our money, especially when is kids related. So we need more um, programs, but it's not only to programs that the, the money stay in salary. It's, it's more that the product goes to our kids and that's why you know tmf probably is going to disappear because we're going to try to start working with those kids that never going to end up in the street mm. so no so there'll be no need for tmf it's not going to be no need for T tmf uh even though you know i'm one of the biggest supporting mm -hmm. i'm very proud of to say very loud in public anything you need from me as a city council and now at the state level if he Guys willing to help me in mm -hmm. all the borders. Give me that opportunity. You know that you're always going to have my back. But this is this is one. Another thing is that um, well, another reason it can be the public safety. Mm -hmm. So we need to concentrate it in that. So we need to have a better contract for our policemen, for the fire, the first responders, I should say, that we can make them happy, but also to serve our community the way they deserve. I'm not saying they're not doing mm -hmm. it, what they're supposed to be doing. But remember, when you have to be working um, 16 hours, so let's say they have to do a detail in the morning, and then they have eight hours straight, um, after that, how do you think you're going to feel when you go to to do the part that the people expect that you're going to give in and do better? So those going to be my top priority. That's that going to be tough for you because you're in a party, you're running on a political party who is hell-bent on defunding police and taking power away from police and taking discretion away from police. And here you are as a Democrat saying, no, we need more money for police. We need more money for the police. We need more money for the police. Uh, and uh, eventually, this is something that we need to negotiate. This is not something that I want to do it, and it's going to be my way. Remember, it's not going to be a stellar way. It's going to be the right way mm -hmm. to do things. Mm -hmm. when, you're, when you're knocking doors in Lawrence and then you're knocking doors in Methuen, do you, do you see a difference in what people say their needs are, or is it pretty much the same? It's pretty much the same. Surprisingly, but it's, it's pretty much the same. Yeah. So it, it was like the, I'm in shot with that because I thought that I was going to find a different needs in Methuen just because it's Methuen in, in, in uh, but no, at least the door that I has been uh, headed on, this is, is basically very similar, the needs that, you, which has made my job easier. I, I have to tell you, one of the things that I'm loving about Estella Reyes' candidacy is that she's not looking to check all the boxes that her party wants her to check, no. right? Whether it's police, whether it's no. abortion, you agree with them on some stuff, but on some stuff you don't. Um, how, how are you going to handle it when your own party starts coming after you? Because they are going to come after you. Well, um, I think a great example I can give you is that you had been going to my fundraisers and also my kickoff, and you see five city councilors, and two couldn't make it because they were out of town. So that tells you that I know how to work uh, with my co-worker, that I don't think I'm going to be able, I'm not going to be pleased, everyone, mm -hmm. so I'm not always have to be 100% agree with what they say or what they want but you've been me half away 
then we can negotiate. Negoti- yes, negotiate. and we negotiate. So yeah. in one of those one of those negotiations, when I'm looking for an estate rep, we're getting killed in gas, right? I mean, I filled up my tank last night. It was sixty one dollars. Oh. In my life, I don't think I've ever spent sixty one dollars to fill twelve gallons in my in my tank. The the state legislator had a chance at the beginning of the year to cut the gas tax. It's I don't know. It's like three dollars a, a yeah. gallon, I think. And even if they just cut it a little bit, even if they just cut it in half, and cut back on some of the spending somewhere else, um, I think that would help a lot of people. But they voted no. Where would how would you have voted? Yes, you would vote yes, yes to cut. The and gas I was tax. trying to advocate and try to not to convince because I don't like to work uh, to use the word convince. But I tried to work and make understand. You're lucky that you only spend sixty three. I I fill up my tank yesterday and was seventy five, wow. and I'm driving wow. small car wow. than you. So I uh, I know how this is affecting not only you and me but the whole entire. And it's the people at the bottom that suffer the most. The people that are making a hundred thousand yeah. a year, they can absorb the extra ten dollars in their gas tank yeah. or the extra twenty dollars. But the people of Lawrence, the people of Methuen, yeah. it's a work. Those are working class towns. Yeah, it's killing them more, especially when they're on the border. Yeah. Right? Yeah, no, no. Uh, so my answer, uh, my answer to that was, I was going to be, I was, I was voting yes. The other issue that I hear a lot from Methuen, so I thought I'd just throw it out, is because Methuen's on the border of, Methu- of of New Hampshire, it's very difficult for Methuen officials to bring businesses into Methuen because you know they're f- just feet over the line from Salem, and if that same business opens up over the line, they have so many less regulations. You know, it's it's far less expensive, no taxes. How do you encourage businesses to move south of the border, get into into Methuen, into Lawrence, and try and help us stimulate the Merrimack Valley economy south of uh, New Hampshire? Thank you. Great, great question. Um, you staff my forehead? Oh, my gosh. Yes. I, I will give you five. Okay. Five stars. Um, I think we need to acknowledge our taxes because this is, in, and thank you for that question, and I'm going to tell you why. One of the things that I say um, at the beginning of this is Methuen need to attract more businesses. So downtown Methuen, it's not really much. It's dead. And, and go to Lawrence. Yep. Even though they have to pay taxes. And one of the things that we can't forget uh, that you just mentioned it was um, – that when we do, uh, when we make application because we want to bring business in life to the city, so it's the regulations. Mm-hmm. So we need to look it into what is happening in Methuen that is not affecting Lawrence in that aspect. Because we have so many businesses mm-hmm. in Lawrence. Lawrence is booming and <laughs> Methuen is, is falling apart. And it's amazing because for years and years, my entire life, it was always the opposite. Methuen was always on the upswing, and Lawrence was always, people always said Lawrence has great potential, but that's all they've ever said because it's never reached any of that potential. And lately, at least for the last two or three years, it seems like Lawrence is starting to boom again. I see businesses moving in like crazy, but I look at Methuen, and they're fleeing for New Hampshire. And so that's why I ask, because I, I, if there's a way that you could do in Methuen what you're doing in Lawrence... And, and, and increase the tax revenue for the average person, which means their property taxes goes down when more businesses move in. In order for you just to get what you want, um, just to see what I want to see in Methuen, is that you need to work very close, not only with the city councilors, but yes, with the mayor. And just to kind of put something that is going to be more flexible to, do, uh, to those uh, industries that they can feel they can be um, okay open a business in Methuen not to be thinking that I have to go to Salem or I have to go to Lawrence because believe it or not, I don't even know if we are going to be having more space to bring more businesses in Lawrence. Yeah, Lawrence is pretty full. <laughs> it right? is full. It, it is, is full. Yeah. So it, uh, you see the new projects that is coming up on Union and um, Canal Street. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be some kind of bank. Bank. Yeah. And you see another one, another bank coming into Lawrence and Exit Street. Oh, really? Wow. So all these businesses are looking at Lawrence. They're targeting Lawrence. Is there a way we can make Lawrence and Methuen like an empowerment zone where um, if businesses choose to come into Methuen and Lawrence, 
they get a break on their taxes. They get a, they get maybe fifty percent on whatever fees they have. Like say a guy wants to open a pizza shop, he's got to get a fryer later permit. He's got to get an oven permit. He's got to get an occupancy permit. Is there a way that we can we can make that easier for them? Well, that's what I wish to see happening in Methuen. I can't elaborate much about that because I don't, I don't know what is the real problem behind. But eventually, it's an issue right there. It's mm-hmm. a problem. It's, right. it's something that we need to tie it up with, um, with the same way that we are being dealing in Lawrence. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we do a tax break for, you know, like, three, four years, but after that, they just go back to normal. It's, it's also that, okay, you're going to open a business, but you're going to have like 100 employers. You're going to take 40 from Lawrence. So that way, the taxes that I'm released to your side is coming back to the city mm-hmm. anyway because your your residents is going to pay those taxes. Right. So it, it's kind of balancing things up and make it easier for them and attract it. Mm-hmm. Because uh, let's say that I'm an investor and I want to go to, but the taxes are going to kill me. So then I do my research and I can see, oh, you know, but it's only like three miles from away from Methuen or six miles from Lawrence. So the might as well people is gonna come in in, in, in shop in my in my business. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We have about three minutes left. Why don't you make your final pitch? Why should people in Lawrence and Methuen, given the choice between you and the other two candidates, um, why should they vote for you? Why should they why should they check your stuff? And by the way, I want to remind people, this race will be decided in September sixth in the primary. Mm-hmm. This is not a election that will be decided in November. And a lot of people don't vote in primaries. So you've got to motivate people to get out. September 6th is the end of this race because there's no Republican. So in the primary, that's good. whoever wins the primary wins the seat, right? So tell people why they should vote for you. Why they should vote for the Stella Regis? Well, I, I have the experience to go and chase the grants that we need, not only for Lawrence, but yes, also for Methuen. And uh, the great relationship that I have at the state level that is not going to be for me to go and be well known or start in knowing people at the um, state level. And, and also uh, the experience that I've been um, realized or utilized on city council that I've been able to make to a school in my district. And two park has been renovated. Um, another thing that is always um, has been one of my uh, priorities that when we know that it's going to be a bill passed on the on the state level, so how this is going to benefit and affect our community, mm-hmm. I humble ask for your support. And as you said, this is only September. It's only one shot. It's not going to be twice like many people think that, okay, but we're going for the second round. It's not going to be a second. This right. is going to be only one. And, and I promise uh, in public that if you uh, give me this opportunity, um, this is something that you're always going to come back and say thanks for that decision that I had made. Mm-hmm. So please give me that oppor- uh, opportunity. And I promise that whatever you need, this is not about me. This is not about stellar ages. This is about our community. It's two community, one goal. Excellent. Couldn't have said it better myself, although maybe I could have, but I don't think so. Um, I want to. Th- By the way, Santiago Reyes Cruz finally showed up a, a minute and four seconds to the end of the end of the show. And actually, that, 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 that means he's early for him, because usually when he says he's going to be somewhere, it's like three hours late. But he's only an hour but late he's, today. But he's early. He's, he's, oh, that's right. He's early. Right. So uh, you can roll up, Mel. I want to thank uh, Estella Reyes. Uh, she's a candidate for state representative. I love Estella Reyes. I really do hope that you win, um, especially the guy running against you. Again, lives in his mom's basement, doesn't have a job, and is only running because he needs a job. You already have a job. You don't need a job. I don't need right? a job. You don't live in your mom's basement. You own your own house. You get your own family. Uh, and I think that's what I think that's what the Methuen voters are looking for, hopefully. I want to thank McLennan Real Estate Century 21. We're going to have Matt in here, I think, next week. A lot of funky things going on with the real estate market. AFC Urgent Care. Pleasant Valley Landscaping. I missed him at the beginning. Dave Id Consoli. David Consoli is looking for... Uh, uh, they're actually open now for new jobs. If you have... Anything but lawn mowing. He doesn't do lawn mowing. 
but he'll do any other kind of landscaping you need. They are, they are open for new job work for now the first time in like a year. AFC Urgent Care, we love Lisa and everybody over at AFC Urgent Care. Marsat and Sun Construction, EIS Investigation and Gun Training, Borelli's Deli, love Borelli's Deli, Tomo and Shaken Seafood, who'd we leave out? Uh, Lazy River Products in Drake It, and a free shout out to Clear Path for Veterans, New England, Sullivan Insurance, and Sebastian's House of Toys. Melvin Taylor says you gotta go home, so go home already. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.